Well, we got a new inductee for the 2023 Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. And this hat, this hat I'm wearing, a Cincinnati Reds hat, that player just got voted in, did play for this team. Hey guys, this is AWO here. We're more presenting you today in Smash. Yes, this is originally my wrestling channel, but I'm combining my wrestling channel and sports channel into one. So this will be wrestling and sports related. So if you're into wrestling or sports, this is a channel for you. If you're watching this video for the first time, subscribe down below and smash that like button and share this channel with your friends, family, colleagues, on all your social media platforms, word of mouth, whatever, if you're into wrestling and if you're into sports. But yes, let's get to the topic at hand. Let's just, just announce. Just announced that we have a new inductee into the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame for 2023. And this inductee has played for four different teams throughout his career. And the inductee is Scott Wolin, third baseman Scott Wolin. If one of the best third basemen of all time. And it's just been inducted there the, by the writers into the 2023 Hall of Fame. With 76% of the vote. In fact, of 76.3%. So, Barry, basically, Barry just got in. He barely just got in the Hall of Fame. Okay? Barry voted in. And that closest is Todd Hallett with 72%. So, there's a good chance. There's a possibility he may get next year. I don't know. But he just, he, he's close. But only Scott Bowen's the only one that's been voted in. As you know, Fember Griff has already been... In, is already been inducted, did not by vote by the committee. All right, so Fred McGriff is going to be joining Scott Wolin. Well, actually, Scott Wolin is going to be joining Fred McGriff, the crime dog, into the Hall of Fame in July when they do the, the Hall of Fame celebration. When they, you know, and when they do this, when all the Hall of Famers come out, and then the new inductees come out to do their speeches, you're just going to have two Scott Wolin and Fred McGriff will be, you know, giving out speeches. Speeches about their career and you know how honored they are to be in the Hall of Fame. And but yes, yeah, so I watched these two growing up. Well, Fred McGriff is a little bit before my time, but I was still, but I was still relatively young when he retired. I was probably like nine or ten years old when he retired in 97, 98. Right? I was young when his prime, really, really young. Scott Wolden, I knew. I watched. I watched most of my career. Most of my most most. I'm, I'm sorry. I watched a lot. Okay, uh, he was a Philadelphia Philly, right? And then he traded. He traded him to St. Louis Cardinals. He helped St. Louis, you know, win the World Series. He was a right. He helped, uh, St. Louis won the World Series with him. Pujols, Jed Edmonds, Chris Carpenter, Mark Mulder. Really, really good teams in the 2000s. Albert Pujols, of course, who just retired this year. You know, five years from now, he's the fir a first ballot Hall of Famer. And he's definitely going to be the 90% percentile. But he's going to be with Yadier Molina. Yadier Molina, I don't know, would be a first ballot. But, but Scott, and yeah, the, the knock on Scott Wall, you might say, and he did play with my Blue Jays. I know I'm wearing a Reds hat. I should be wearing a Blue Jays hat. But this is the last team he played for. He played with my Blue Jays for a year and a half. Then he got traded to his hometown or his home. I believe it's Cincinnati. He wanted to play close to home where his family is. And he played his final years in Cincinnati and he retired as a Cincinnati Red. And you could say, well, he, you know, you could you, you, there's detractors out there. Say, oh, but he was a good player, not a great player. And Hall of Fame should be great players. He's always been injury prone. He hasn't had like huge offensive seasons. He had good offensive seasons, but not like monstrous offensive seasons, right? Every year. Because he's not been healthy. But he's been really good, and I say, and people do say he's one of the best third basemen of all time. I watched him, watched him, and yeah, he, he's definitely top ten third baseman, maybe top five third baseman defensively. Of all time, even when he got older, even when he got older, his range didn't seem like to diminish, and his arms seemed to diminish. When I was in, when he was in Toronto, I, he was much older, but it didn't seem like he was on a decline defensively. He's still. Even his injuries, his injuries didn't make him decline as he got older. Okay. He's yeah, he didn't put up the offensive numbers like Mike Schmidt. You know? Once Beltray gets in, he didn't put up the offensive numbers like Beltray. Put up good offensive numbers, but not elite offensive numbers like Beltray did or like Mike Schmidt did. Obviously. Because Beltray's gonna get in the Hall of Fame. I think it's next year he's eligible. It might be next year or the year after. I think it's next year Beltray's eligible. So yeah, Scott Wood's in the Hall of Fame, and I'm pretty sure if I'm 
I don't know he's gonna go in as, but if I had to guess, he'll go in as a Cardinal because he won the World Series with the Cardinals, and he'll be joining Crime Dog Family Group after a long, long wait. He was off the ballot, and then the committee decided to put him on because they felt he was a Hall of Famer. And you know what? Looking back, yeah, he should have been in the Hall of Fame. Should be voted in. He's 493 home runs away, seven away from 500. Go golf caliber first baseman, elite slugger in that lineup, dangerous hitter. Never question about PEDs, you know, steroids. No, there's no questions about that with him. Very good guy in the clubhouse. Help Atlanta win the World Series in 95. Okay. Yes, he's part of the big trade with the Blue Jays and helped Blue Jays eventually win the World Series. But Fenwick was good for us through his whole career. And he should have been voted in. I He should have definitely been voted in. But I'm glad he's in now because he deserves it. Fenwick Griff deserves it. Okay, he deserved it a long time ago. And you can say some people are going to say, in my opinion, Scott Wollin is. Some people say Scott Wollin doesn't deserve it. But you know what? I'm like, that's okay. I'm okay with Scott Wollin coming in. Next year is going to be a little harder for eligible people. I think Beltre, like I said, Beltre. And in the years coming after, you're going to have like Beltre, Ichiro. I don't know who else is on the list. But there's players coming off the list. Players coming on the list. You're going to be eligible for the first time next year there. Might be... Might bump up, might bump down some of the players that got voted that were close. Like Todd Helen, he got 72%. But since if it's Bellatre or somebody else, somebody else, Todd Helen may not come in next year because this, this draft, this, no, this, this Hall of Fame list is not really exactly a strong one. You didn't have a for sure Hall of Famer on the list. Like when Ishro gets is eligible, you know Ishro is going at first ballot. When Bellatre is eligible, you know he's going in. This year, we didn't have a for sure Hall of Fame. There could have been a good chance, a really good chance, nobody could, have, nobody would have joined Crime Dog Fred McGriff in the Hall of Fame this year. But Fred, but Scott Wollin made it. Scott Wollin made it. But there was a strong chance. But you know what? As I like to say, congratulate both to Scott Wollin and obviously congratulate to Fred McGriff. I know it was, it was, he got in a couple, like two months ago, a month or two months ago, but congratulations to Fred McGriff, Hall of Famers. Two great guys, two great players, Hall of Fame worthy players, helped their teams win World Series, and yeah, you're joining the legends of the uh, legends of baseball, guys. Like, share, subscribe, comment below, and tell me your thoughts.